We all have dreams of finding the perfect partner, and then starting a family life that puts fairy tales to shame. That's exactly what Blake Ruff imagined that he accomplished when he married the woman of his dreams. All he ever wanted was to start a family with her, at least until everything went south. After years of sharing a life together, Blake finally learned the truth as to who his wife really was, and the truth would shake him to the core. Greetings, salutations, and welcome to our channel. Today we'll be looking into the story of Blake and Lori, a marriage that was supposed to be perfect turned completely upside down. As always, if you want to be updated with all the amazing stories we are going to cover, make sure to subscribe to our channel to be rich of knowledge and entertainment, as you will be notified when we upload new videos. You can ensure that you will not be missing any of our uploads by clicking on the bell icon. Now, let's begin our dive into this story. It was on a fateful day in 2003 when Blake Ruff met Laurie Erica Kennedy for the first time. It was a feeling that he described as love at first sight, and he immediately knew that his life was going to change the moment their eyes met. If only he knew exactly how much of an extent those changes were. After a mere year of getting to know each other, the two lovebirds found themselves married, even though Blake knew next to nothing about his wife's past. Could it be that she was hiding her past from everybody she knew? The answers were revealed in due time, although not by Laurie's own hand. To the surprise of many within the Ruff family, Blake was absolutely fine with Laurie's refusing to get into details about her past. However, his family sung a different tune, as they always voiced out that it was highly suspicious. It was clear to many that Blake's family found Laurie's secrecy to be a cause for concern. The only thing Laurie ever told anybody was the fact that she had a tough childhood. Laurie had just moved to Texas from Arizona when she encountered Blake. Blake and Laurie met in Bible class, and he noticed that she didn't have any friends of her own. Blake thought that this was enough for him to know, and all of his family's concerns were completely let out the other ear. Laurie and Blake decided to get married in a private ceremony, with no family attending the ceremony itself. After all, Laurie had to family to speak of herself, either way. The only person that was there was the couple's preacher, who was ecstatic about the thought of the two lovebirds finally eloping. After they both exchanged their vows and finalized their marriage, their first order of business was to immediately start a family. Blake lived a blessed life, as he had a job that he loved being a part of, and a woman that he loved with all his heart to go back home to. The wonder of childbirth was the next obvious step for Blake and Laurie. Now that they've achieved marital status, they began to try to have kids, but sadly, like many other unfortunate souls that live in this world, the road to childbirth was difficult to say the least. Laurie ended up going through several miscarriages. However, even though they went through such hardships, their determination to bring one of their own into the world was never wavered. The Ruffs then decided to give Inverto fertilization a try. Their attempt succeeded, and no longer after that, Laurie was pregnant with a baby girl to call their own. They were finally happy. However, what happened after the birth of the child was something that Blake did not expect and it left him shocked for quite some time. 2008 marked the year when Laurie gave birth to a healthy baby girl. The baby should have been a cause of celebration to the lovebirds, but instead, things took a turn for the worst as Laurie started to grow distant from others and pushed people away from her life. This included her beloved husband Blake as well. Laurie started acting overprotective of their daughter as she kept keeping her distance from everyone else. While Blake was used to Laurie being a private person, this was on a completely different scale. Blake knew that something was wrong, but he had absolutely no idea what it was. Blake could not make Laurie speak out as to what it is either. Suddenly, her behavior changed again out of the blue as Laurie stopped keeping Blake distant. Laurie began to bombard Blake with questions about his family and their lineage. She wanted to know everything in detail. This was certainly odd behavior from someone who refused to speak up about her own past. Blake had questions upon questions, plaguing his mind by this time. Is Laurie finally doing all right? What is she trying to do? Does she finally decide to trust him to do his part for their daughter's future? 
Blake was happy as he started feeling positive about their future, even though all his family could see were red flags. After tolerating Laurie's antics for so long, the Ruffs family found their patience finally being broken as Blake's parents were banned from meeting their granddaughter. Laurie and the Ruffs began to fight constantly, putting Blake in a really rough spot of supporting his wife while sating his family. With the intensity of the pressure on Laurie increasing, she suddenly fell into depression. The privacy that she craved for was something that she was not given, and it was beginning to affect her emotionally and mentally. However, Laurie wanted to do everything that she can to try to save her marriage, and due to that alone, she agreed to try couples counseling. They entered marriage counseling in the year 2010, as they both knew that this was the last chance that they will have to salvage their marriage. However, all was lost at the end, as they figured out that there was nothing they could do to fix things. After seven years of being a family, Blake has accepted the fact that Laurie changed drastically since they first met, and the person that is beside him is not the same Laurie he met all those years ago. In the coming spring, Blake and Laurie filed for divorce. However, this was not the end of their story. They still needed to come up with a way to raise their daughter while being apart. For Laurie, things only took a turn for the worst from that point. Her depression lingered and she kept sinking deep into the abyss. There came a point when it was all too much for her to bear. December 2010 was definitely a time that will be stuck in the rough household's memories for years to come. On the eve of Christmas, Laurie drove all the way to the Ruff family household in a black SUV as she parked by the house. She tragically took her own life in the car, and her body wasn't found until the next morning. Blake's father was the one to discover the body, as he found two notes left behind by her. One was meant for him, while the other was for their daughter. However, when he took a look at both letters, the writing turned out to be illegible. Blake was shocked to hear what had conspired, as he knew that Laurie was having issues, but he never imagined that it was to the extent of suicide. While he was going through Laurie's old belongings, he comes across an old lunchbox that he's never seen around the house before. It did not feel like the right thing to open the box, but his desire to know more about Laurie's past was strong. With the help of the local precinct, he managed to get the box open, and what he found shocked him. He found ID cards from different states, and a birth certificate with a name that he didn't recognize. It all made sense to him when he also encountered a name change document from 1988. Laurie would have been 17 years old at that time. The name change document revealed that Laurie had changed her name from Becky Sue Turner in 1988. However, when they looked deeper into her history, what they found puzzled them to the core. Becky Sue Turner supposedly perished in a house fire in 1971, when she was two years old. This made it clear that Laurie's identity is still unknown. The investigation eventually came up with no leads, and all hope was lost, at least until Colleen Fritzpatrick heard about the case in 2013. She was a genealogist that wanted to tackle the mystery. All she needed to make it happen was a DNA sample from the couple's daughter. At this time, Joe Velling was the private investigator that was following the case, and when Colleen Fitzpatrick claimed that she found a connection to Laurie in Pennsylvania, he hopped onto a plane in order to find the answers that he and Blake were desperately searching for. The connection was in the form of a cousin named Michael Cassidy. When Joe showed Cassidy's family a picture of Laurie, someone managed to recognize her as Kimberly McLean. Kimberly's story is unfortunate on its own. She ran away from home at the age of 17 when her mother found love in a man that she could not stand. To this day, the gap between the time when she ran away from home and her meeting Blake to start a new life is a mystery. Nobody really knows of the kind of life that she had led. To this day, authorities list her as a Jane Doe in their systems. At least Blake finally has peace knowing the burden that she had carried for all her lifetime. We finally reached the conclusion of the tragic tale of Blake and Laurie's love life. For more intriguing stories like this, Subscribe to our channel and press that bell button to get an update every single time we upload a new video. Make sure to like this video and share it with somebody. Thank you for watching and see you all next time.